Hello, I'm Professor Stephen Abbott. My book, Adhesion Science, Principles and Practice, is linked to a large series of apps on my Practical Adhesion website. In this video, we look at two apps showing the essential requirements for any pressure-sensitive adhesive. Formulating a PSA, a pressure-sensitive adhesive, is hard work. There are many contradictions built into a PSA. I want to show two ways that you can rationally approach some of the formulation aspects of a PSA. If you don't get these right, you're doomed. Getting them right doesn't guarantee success, but getting them wrong does guarantee failure. The first thing to discuss is the famous Dahlquist criterion. Now, we have a rough surface. The surface has a roughness with an average height h, and each feature has a radius r. Now you'll recognize that most rough surfaces don't have a single h height and a nice convenient radius r, but it turns out that you can always approximate a real surface with a single h and single r. It's good roughness physics. So given that you have this rough surface, then if you have a strong adhesive and try to push it into contact, no amount of pressure will get you good contact. But if the modulus of the adhesive is less than a critical value, GC, then the adhesive will actually spontaneously flow into the surface and fill all the nooks and crannies. And this critical modulus depends on the work of adhesion and the square root of the radius divided by the cube of the height. So you want the modulus to be less than this, so you want this to be as large a value as possible, because then you can have a high modulus adhesive, which might help in other ways. Well, you can't do much about W, because the work of adhesion on PE is something like 30, and on a nicely coroned or whatever surface, it'll be something like 45. So there's not much you can do there. The roughness, if the radius is large, i.e. if it's a slowly undulating roughness, then this will be a large value, so that's easy to be less than. And if the height is large, then this will be a small value, so big high roughnesses are very bad. Here's the calculation. If we have a radius of, say, 5 microns, and a height of, say, half a micron, and a work of adhesion of 41 millinutes per meter, then this critical value is 0.24 megapascals. And in 1969, Carl Dahlquist came up with this quote. He worked for 3M. For measurable quick tack, the elastic modulus must be below a certain fixed value which is fairly independent of the nature of the adhesive, the adherent, and the applied pressure. And he decided that this was about 0.3 megapascals. And with these typical values, we're in the 0.1 to 0.2 megapascal range. So you must get your modulus low enough so that it is less than the Dahlquist criterion. So if you have a super smooth surface, then you can have a somewhat higher modulus. But for a typical surface where you've got roughnesses like this, you need to be below that Dahlquist criterion. So that's the first thing you must do. The other thing you must do is make sure you're in the right part of the Chang window. Chang, who worked for Avery Dennison, realized that there are a number of things which happen in the life of a PSA. It gets slit, it gets coated, but of key interest is the peel test, which takes place at a frequency of about 10 to the 2 per second, creep, which takes place over hundreds of seconds, and tack, which takes place over, say, one second. So you need properties which, in this range, allow you to do the right thing. And Chang realized that you had a choice. You can have G prime, which is the elastic modulus, in some range, depending on G prime at 0.01 hertz at the creep rate, or at 100 hertz at the peel rate, but also the G double prime, the loss modulus, which is also at the 0.01 hertz or the 100 hertz. So you would measure the rheological properties of your PSA, 
And if you wanted a medium G prime, medium G prime, medium modulus, medium loss, general purpose PSA, then you would have to make sure that your properties, your moduli, were in this sort of region. So this is the middle of the road Chang window into decent PSA. If you want a cold temperature PSA, then you want a low G prime. So you need to be much lower G prime, much lower G prime at low frequencies, and a much higher G double prime, a more lossy material. And then you've got a low modulus, high loss, cold temperature PSA, and so forth. We can look at the same Chang window in other ways. Uh, this is the Bartholomew version of the Chang window, where you've got different applications, attributes, and also you can have the uh, full-on version, which includes this line, which is tan delta equals 1. So here we have elastic, here we have plastic. This is more cohesive. So these are the softer ones, these are the harder ones. And here's the Dahlquist 0.3 megapascals. So up here we have real adhesives, not PSAs, and those things which are dicing with high temperatures and, the, and outdoor or tough things have to be up in this region. So make sure you are below Dahlquist and make sure that you and the team know where you want to be in this Chang window space. Once you've done that, the chances of formulating a good PSA are greatly increased.